just following on from the last video, um, you're going to see questions that um, are more worded questions. For example, you, you may that will require you to use this distance formula. So this question here is not going to be your typical question. This might this would have been a typical stage five question testing. You know the actual you've got that skill. You know that formula. You're going to be given the formula on the formula sheet, so there's no test of you being able to recall that formula. So this is no long and substituting into a formula is also um, not a skill. Is a skill you, you're expected to have. It's going to be questions like show that a point lies on a circle center, and you're given detail about that. And you might be thinking. Well, what does that have to do with the distance formula? Show that a point lies on a circle. Well, if you have a think about that, you've got your circle. You know its centre is here, and you'll be given the centre. It's You know that if this point down here, it's also on our number line, is on the circle, the distance between the center and this point, the distance, that will be equal to the radius. So there's obviously going to be uh, features about the circle that you must be given. You'll have to be given its center. You'd have to be given its radius. But it's then applying the understanding of a circle, its center, what being on the circle means. And to this distance formula. You might never have used this distance formula in association with a circle before, but that doesn't mean that you can't. And that doesn't mean that there aren't questions that could be set such that it requires you to apply the distance formula to a circle. I'd encourage you to be on the lookout and identify length length and distance, that shouldn't be too foreign, to know that if you're reading through a question, you don't see the word distance, you do see the word length, but you still make the association between length and this formula. Uh, dimensions, dimensions of those um, shapes that I was talking about, so you might be asked to find the dim, um area of a rhombus, knowing that the dimensions required are the diagonals, half the product of the diagonals is the formula for the area of a rhombus, so you need the dimensions of a rhombus, you might be given them, and asked to, um, or you might be given the points on the rhombus, you're required to get the dimensions yourself. And equidistant, equally distant. Um, of, I, I would be surprised if that word distant didn't um, connect you to your distance formula. Um, I'm not going to spend so much time talking about some of these. I'll write them up. They'll be here on um, the notes section of your OneNote. So you can sit and work through the solution. Um, if I come to any that I feel that need an explanation, then um, they will be here on this video. So with this first example, you can see I've written label the points x1, y1 and x2, y2. I'm going to be really disappointed, I think, if I don't see this happening throughout the work in uh, that you do out of the textbook. So in your working, your workbook, um, and then also in topic tests and assessment tasks. Many students say uh, after they get a formal assessment task back or a topic test back. Oh, but I knew that. I knew that work. Oh, I just made a careless mistake. These will be little techniques that stop you from being careless. They keep you focused. They keep you on track. 
These are the things you need to be practicing every time you do a question such that it becomes automatic in a topic test or in an assessment task when you're under pressure. It will keep you more focused when you're under pressure. It will keep you calmer under pressure. You've got nice um, routines that you've been practicing. You'll just fall into that nice routine in the assessment task. You're less likely to be careless. You're less likely to make silly mistakes. However, it's not going to just happen in the assessment task unless you practice it throughout the whole chapter, before the topic test. You practice it before the assessment task. This is not something setting out, doing these, assisting yourself with these little aids and not something that are going to come to you automatically in an assessment task if you haven't practiced them. There are no extra marks or rewards for students who take shortcuts. And in fact, the students who take shortcuts are more likely to make silly mistakes. They're more likely to be rushing. They're more likely to be losing track of their thoughts. So, um, while I've said in the introductory video that the uh, emphasis won't be on using this formula, that doesn't mean you won't have to use the formula. Clearly you'll be using the formula a lot. You need um, to be on the lookout for lots of negatives and you can see that here. Anytime we're subtracting and we're using negatives, we just have to be careful. Please be careful. Many mistakes are lost. Uh, sorry, many mistakes are made. Many marks are lost because students are, are careless. And many questions are made very difficult because students are using the wrong number. They may, they've made the question more difficult because they've made a silly mistake. And now the question's more difficult. Now, not only does that stress the student because it's difficult, but it wastes time. It wastes your time. So we've got to think about how we're going to avoid these situations. How are we going to make ourselves be careful? Well, we're going to show every step. We're not going to try and jump from this line down to here. Um, yeah, we're going to set things up and uh, practice, practice this setting out. It really only takes seconds to set something like this up. It might take up a lot of space in the, your answer booklet, but it only takes seconds. I'll pause the video and write up some more solutions and really only come back and talk about them if I need to emphasize anything. Otherwise, you will pause the video and look at the solution and work through it. Oh, there is just one more point I want to make about this distance formula. Distance formula, like I said before, is based on Pythagoras' theorem. Anytime you see the Pythagorean triads, so hopefully you know the Pythagorean triads to be um, uh, 3, 4 and 5, 5. Uh, the, the triads are the uh, right angle triangles that will have whole numbers on their sides. So we've got a 3, 4, longer side being 5. This one here, 5, 12, 13, is your next um, Pythagorean triad in terms of sides of size of sides. 5, 12, and 13. So when you come across 5 squared and 12 squared, 5 squared, 12 squared, you can know that your answer is going to be 13. If at this stage you can see your 5 and your 12, you could jump straight from here to the answer. But if you're not familiar with it, keep doing it until you are familiar with it and then use your Pythagorean triads. Please talk to me in class about this if you have not um, seen before these things called Pythagorean 
the triads because there are three sides to a triangle obviously and the sides will always be whole numbers. In this um, example I probably want to talk more about um, set, setting out and obviously the way to approach this type of question. You can see I've underlined equidistant because that's my key word. Um, I've drawn the sketch. Your sketch is like your picture. Any problem where you could draw a picture to give you a uh, different understanding of what's going on, it's yeah, recommended. If you can draw a picture, then do it. So these are really easy to draw pictures. It's based on a number plane and I'm plotting my points. My, my diagram is not very convincing, so it's, it's clearly the scale is uh, uh, throwing the throwing it uh, me off thinking that this point 7 minus 3 is equidistant to 3 minus 4 because it actually looks much closer to 3 minus 4 than it does to 8 1 so, but it's suggesting that it's not uh, that means my diagram is just not to scale and um, let's go through the process uh, like I said I'm going to emphasize the setting out now, you probably have done enough of these to know that these points were often named X, Y and Z, L, M and N. If that's not the case, and it's not in this one, then introduce the labelling. Introduce labelling. It's, it makes my setting out so much easier. If, I'm, if I've already established that I'm going to assign A to this, point and B to this one and C to this one, then I can talk about the distance A to C and the marker knows what I'm talking about. I've listed my A and C, I've put my X1, Y1, X2, Y2 underneath and the formula and so on and I get root 17. Then I'm saying to the marker, I now know that I need to find the distance from B to C. Communicate to the marker what you're doing. Write a little sentence. These little sentences will become easier if you have uh, introduced um, some labelling like this. And the only reason I've gone sideways is because I'm running out of space um, and I want to keep it all on the one page. But I normally wouldn't recommend that you go sideways with your working. But you see that you get root 17, which makes it really easy then that I can, rather than writing out points, names, I can just say, therefore A and B are equidistant from C. It's not appropriate for you to make a conclusion like this if you've never defined what A, B and C actually are, and you will be penalised. So keep that in mind. I think I better pause the video there and do the rest of the examples in another video.